I want to welcome all our uh, viewers, all our friends, our entire community uh, to a very, very special event. Uh, meeting a person who is um, not only a good friend, but a mentor, in many ways a teacher, and one of the spiritual leaders, not just media personality of the American Jewry today. It's a tremendous honor for all of us that you mark in this very, very busy, painful period of time, dedicate your time to speak with us. Thank you so much. Welcome. It is my honor. Arye, anytime you call, I will be available to you. And the truth is, I miss all of yours and the entire Russian-speaking American community, Jewish and non-Jewish. And it was strange for me. Four years ago, I was sitting with, with uh, Yuri Rostov on RTN, anchoring the 2016 elections. And at that time, we were told Donald Trump had no way of defeating Hillary Clinton. There was no way, of, no path to 270, which is the number of electoral votes somebody needs to win the presidency. And then, I don't know, somewhere around 11 o'clock, things changed everywhere in the world, and Donald Trump soared to a victory. I remember that very, very well that night, and I miss the fact that I was not on camera this year with Yuri, and I hope everybody who watched RTN still learned a lot and grew from the experience. So it is my honor that I Arye Katsin to be on with you. Thank you so much, Abba Mark Golub. And as you see, I have a picture of my Rebbe, who was a rabbi in Slabotka. He's a student of uh, the altar of, of Slabotka, Rabnosan Svifinkel. And I know, I know that you, your grandfather from Minsk, am I right? Also from was that, a rabbi from Slabotka. He, the rabbi, I have two grandfathers, obviously. Right. And the grandfather from Minsk was not the one who became, I see. who received smicha from a Slabotki reshiva. That was my father's father. Wow. My mother's father studied at Slobodka Yeshiva, received his smicha there, and then came to America to be a rabbi, which he found to be very distasteful, the way American Jewry operated. And so he left the rabbi and went into business, as so many of that generation did, but remained always a committed, learned Orthodox Jew. And I grew up in Manhattan, and if people know Manhattan, there's a Karbach synagogue on 79th Street, just west of West End Avenue, and that's where I grew up. But what really inspired me when we met, uh, first time I remember in talking about the Russian program, is um, you taught me about uh, your approach, which very much resonated. My approach that I learned from my Rebbe, loving people is a foundation. Absolutely. Love and your neighbor. We in the business. I remember you spoke at Rage, and you said, "I'm not in media business. I am in business of loving Avat Israel." You said, "That is." I'm correct. in business of loving people. So, because you're in business of loving people, in a very painful, painful period of time, when my heart is torn, and I see some of my friends fighting, and calling names. And we're in a, in, a, in a time and place where violence and, and very violent rhetoric is in the air. That's why I'm turning to you. First of all, please explain us um, the situation and the election results and where we're headed. And then maybe let's elevate ourselves a little bit and, and, and think about it from Jewish spiritual perspective, how we can as a community and the country move forward. I'll together. be happy to do so. But I first want you to speak Please. for one more moment. Please. When you say it is a very painful, troubling moment, what's the pain from? What's the troubling moment about? First of all, it's not about right and wrong. It's about the hatred. First of all, the hatred between two camps. Second of all, it is about hating Trump or uh, hating those who hate Trump. <laughs> So it's, 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 it's less and less, I would say, maybe a common sense and more and more of emotions. And this is very explosive. All right. 
Well, first let's look at the election and then I'll speak from my perspective to the problem that you've identified and you've identified it very well. Um, as you and I are talking right now, it looks like I would say 99%, it looks like Joe Biden will defeat Donald Trump and will be the next president of the United States. As you and I are talking right now, all he needs is any one state. Biden needs one state. He needs six electoral votes and he'll have 270. He's at 264 now, and he's 11,000 votes ahead in the state of Nevada. If he wins those six votes, or those six electoral votes, and I can't see that changing, that number. He's ahead by 11,000 votes. He will win Nevada, and then it doesn't matter what Pennsylvania does, doesn't matter what North Carolina does, doesn't matter what Georgia does. Donald Trump cannot reach 270 because Joe Biden will. Interestingly enough, there is a possibility in theory in any election for each candidate to win 269 and to tie. But if one person wins 270, it's over. Joe Biden is about to win 270. It's over. And I remember from last election, four years ago, Arye, the overwhelming sentiment in the Russian American community was for Donald Trump. And at that time, by the way, I was wrong too. Why was I wrong? Because I believed all the polls. All the polls said Trump had no chance and everybody was gonna just sweep Hillary into office. But the fact of the matter was, those who supported Donald Trump were right and he won. And he won because the polls were wrong. And the polls were wrong because many people were uncomfortable announcing that they were gonna vote for Trump, even though they felt he was the better candidate. And so Trump won. The minute vote uh, Trump won, or by the way, it really started even before he won. Trump's style during the Republican primary when he called other people names, and when he, he insulted what is called a gold star family, when he seemed to make fun, when he did make fun of a crippled person, when he said some things that were stupid about women, all of these things turned many people against him even Republicans, he was also an outsider and he remained an outsider even after he became president. And for a long time, I don't know if your audience remembers, for a long time, Republicans in Congress did not help him. Meanwhile, the Democrats launched a hideous lie about the man saying that he was a Russian collaborator, a Russian agent, that the Russians were why he had won. And there was a more than two years of investigation, which ultimately proved beyond a shadow of a doubt, there was no evidence at all of all the criticism of Donald Trump. He was not a Russian agent. He was not collaborating with Russia neither he nor anyone in his campaign. But enormous damage was done. And in the Jewish community, there is this feeling that we are committed to a certain sense of social justice. And in the American Jewish community, the vast number of American Jews are liberal. And for them, social justice replaces Judaism as their religion. It is almost as if the Democratic Party is their religion. And as a result, there were many, many American Jews who just despised, hated 
Donald Trump and were willing to go so far as to call him a Nazi, compare him to Hitler, compare him to Goering, which in my mind, and I said this on JBS television, is a form of blasphemy in the Jewish world. You blaspheme the Shoah. You blaspheme the survivor by making any comparison between Donald Trump, as much as you may dislike him, calling him a Nazi is a form of Jewish blasphemy. And I have to say to you, I may be wrong. I'm telling you, I may be wrong, but I'm giving you my experience. My experience is Jewish Democrat, Democrats hate Donald Trump with a vitriol and emotional hatred that you would have for a Adolf Hitler. I don't see anything like that on the Republican Jewish side. I see people who strongly support Donald Trump because they feel Donald Trump has been good for America and has been the most pro-Israel president this country has ever had. And so Jews who care about the Jewish people and who care about the well-being of the state of Israel looked at all the things Donald Trump has done and said, this guy is amazing. And they also feel that what he's done for America has been very positive. So I'm sorry to say, I don't see, not, not sorry, I don't share your experience. I don't see Republican Jews being mean or even critical of Democrats who hate Donald Trump. I see them saying, we think you're wrong, but I don't see any hatred. I don't see any violence. I don't see any vitriol coming out of Republican Jews. And what your audience should know is that while Donald Trump certainly lost the Jewish vote, Republicans normally and regularly lose the Jewish vote in every presidential election. Donald Trump did better this year among the Jews of America than any president since 1988 when Michael Dukakis ran against George H.W. Bush. 1988. Four years ago, Donald Trump won 24% of the Jewish vote. This year, that went up 25%. He won 30% of the Jewish community vote. In the state of Florida, which was critical for Donald Trump to win, and when he won Florida last night, Tuesday night, he had a chance to win the presidency again if he could win Arizona. When he lost Arizona, he lost the election. But he had to win Florida. We were told he was way behind in Florida. He won Florida. He won Florida in part because of the Latino vote, which is strange. Anybody who is watching the criticism of Donald Trump and the criticism is he's a racist. If he's a racist, why did the Latino vote go for Donald Trump at a higher rate than ever before? Why did the African-American community vote, vote more for Donald Trump than they did four years ago? But most significantly, in the state of Florida, which has an older Jewish demographic, 41%, 40, 41% of Florida Jews voted for Donald Trump. That's almost 50%. So it's interesting. 
one more one more statistic among those Jews who consider Israel and foreign policy to be their priority. Jews concerned with Israel, and you know as well as I do, there's a vast number of American Jews who are cultural Jews. They're cultural, secular Jews. Many of them don't care about Israel at all. Many of them are non-Orthodox Jews. But among those Jews of America who care about Israel and foreign policy of the United States, I'm asking your audience, what percentage of those Jews voted for Donald Trump? And the answer is 87%. 87%. Of Jews who care about Israel and American foreign policy. 87%. That's unheard of. Voted for Donald Trump. Now, if you support Donald Trump, you're upset. He's going to lose. The Trump presidency is over. And there'll be many changes in America because of it. And if you're a Jew who cares about Israel and is worried about anti-Semitism in the U.S. Congress, institutionalized anti-Semitism, which is the only anti-Semitism that upsets me. I'm upset by two things. BDS, the attempt on college campuses, to bash Israel and to defund Israel and to get proclamations passed against Israel on college campuses. That upsets me. The only other thing that upsets me in terms of anti-Semitism is institutionalized anti-Semitism. And the only place I see that happening is among a few but a very important few Democrat congressional women. That upsets me. And I'm worried that the Biden administration will be pushed to the far progressive left, and that will be bad for Israel. It'll be bad for Jews. It'll be bad for the United States of America. And yet, every four years, we go to the polls and we vote. And those who supported Trump, especially if they believe the election was fair and square, they'll make no issue. They won't be rioting in the streets. The windows in Brooklyn and the windows in Manhattan will not be smashed. That wouldn't have been true if Trump had won which is a very sad commentary on where America is and where the far left of America is, which means the Democratic Party as well. But I believe in the American system. I hope that if the Republicans, it looks like they will hold on to the Senate. If they hold on to the Senate, the rules of filibuster. I don't know if your audience understands what filibuster is in the United States Senate, but filibuster means that a simple majority cannot rule the day in the Senate. If you want to pass certain things in the Senate, 51 senators won't do it for you. You need 60. That means you need bipartisan support. And America is all about a government of checks and balances. If you lose checks and balances, America is over. The Democrats threatened to eliminate the filibuster, which means if they had 51 senators, they could do whatever they wanted. They were going to pack the Supreme Court. Well, they can't 
pack the Supreme Court if they don't have the Senate. They were going to bring in two new states, the District of Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico, both of which are overwhelmingly Democrat, which means they'd have four new Democratic senators. That would skew the balance. All of these things cannot happen if the Republicans hold on to the Senate. So if that happens, there is a check to the power that the Democrats are trying to amass. But I am still concerned for the tone of our country. And that's what you also asked me to speak about. And I did a program today on JBS where I bemoaned, I am saddened by the extent to which Jews, and I have this very high opinion of Jews, American Jews, Jews from the former Soviet Union, a very high opinion. They're supposed to be bright, intelligent, educated, open to ideas, and most of all, tolerant. Tolerant of other people's views when they don't agree. And every Jew has the right to argue as vociferously, as passionately, as intelligently as possible for their view. But never, never by demeaning people who disagree. In English, it's called ad hominem, ad hom which is really Latin. Ad hominem means your argument is not substantive, but it is an attempt to belittle, to demean your opponent. So if you say to somebody, you're wrong because you're ugly, that's ad hominem. Whether a person is beautiful or ugly has no bearing on the legitimacy of their argument. And to say someone, well, you're racist, that's ad hominem as well. And that's the argument we hear all the time. You're for Trump, you're an anti-Semite, and you're a racist, and you're a Nazi, and you're a bigot, and you're a bad person. Nonsense. You can be for Trump, you can be for Biden. You can believe the democratic platform is the best for America and for Israel. You can believe the Republican platform is the best for America and Israel. And you can argue for Biden. You can argue for Trump without making the other person your enemy. And I will stop with after this one more point I'm quoting something you know very, very well, Aryeh, as a rabbi who studied Talmud. In the Jewish tradition, in the Talmud, there is a principle. Elu ve'elu, divrei Elohim chayim. Elu meaning those who argue this way. Ve'elu, and those who oppose and argue the other way, both are speaking the words of the living God. And that's the Talmud's approach, which is why the Talmud always includes the minority position. And the Talmud teaches the minority position one day when circumstances change, the minority position might become the majority position. But either way, one has respect for the argument made by the other side because it is also divrei Elohim chayim, words that reflect the truth in this universe, the words of the living God. I am so saddened by the fact that American Jews have lost that ethic, that Jewish value mainly because they don't know Judaism. Jews who know that understand 
whether you agree or disagree with another person, you never belittle them. It's never about the person. It's about ideas. And Jews have the right to engage intelligent, passionate argument. That's what the Talmud is from beginning to end. Passionate argument, but with respect for the person with whom you're arguing. And what you've pointed out is the saddest development on the American Jewish scene. American Jews have lost the ability to disagree with each other without demonizing the other. <laughs> and we talk often, Aryeh, especially in the liberal reform Jewish community, of respecting the other, the stranger in our midst. And yet, liberal Jews are ready to make Jews who disagree with them into the enemy. They do not respect the other if the other has a different political view. This is, a, and you know this word well also, this is a shanda. A shan, it is a, not only a pity, it is a stain, a black mark on Jewish life today here in America. So Aryeh, I've spoken for a long time, but that's my answer to where the election is and how pained I am with you at the way in which Jews now treat other Jews, especially how liberal Jews treat Jews who support Donald Trump. I'm so moved by your words, and uh, I'm very moved by your courage. <laughs> because I understand that since you see this hostility, for you to say what you're saying right now, um, it's a courageous act. Thank you. And in our generation, as in every generation, uh, you need a prophet. And now, in other words, we say, We're not prophets, but we are the descendants of the prophets. I'm not a prophet. And the prophets were courageous people to confront yeah. and rebuke. And sometimes they paid a heavy price, as you know. Yeah. So, uh, so in a way, you're delivering um, a rebuke. Uh, you directing it to uh, the liberal part. Uh, I did witness on both sides, but if... Um, to mention really the rhetoric and the violence, I of course agree with you. And the reason I want to keep the balance because I think that our program is actually to create the dialogue and build the bridges. I'm so moved also by your um, a comparison uh, of political reality to the arguments in Talmud that both sides are true. In a way, in a mystical uh, sense, we have very similar idea of two hands, which represent uh, chesed, kindness, and the other one, gvura, which is ju justice, right? Justice or power, that only in working together, you can reach a met, the truth. Avram is the kindness, Isaac, Isaac is the gvura, the power, but only Yaakov became the father of the Jewish people. And actually he has the name Israel. Similarly, a husband and wife, two opposites coming together is one. So you taught me something 30 years ago, Mark, and it was really resonating with me through these entire elections. Because you taught me something, you said you believe in America and you believe in the center of America. You believe in the common sense. You believe in a bipartisan approach in America that neither one, either party by itself cannot really promote the goodness uh, of this country, but only working together. So in a Kabbalistic and a mystical way, it means uh, the kindness uh, wants to help the poor. Let's say someone comes to you and asks you, please give me money. So of course you want to give the money, but then you ask yourself, wait a second, but I need to judge this. Will I actually help this person or I empower this person uh, with dependence? So maybe he's going to use this money to buy drugs. And only 
taking these two arguments together, searching for the truth in this particular situation, you can reach, reach the right decision. So working with you, talking to you right now is actually, I think that we can hopefully heal our very divided community, even though you're right, I believe within the Russian community, I believe 85 probably percent of your uh, listeners, maybe even 90, maybe younger people have a little different division, uh, do support Donald Trump, of course. But on a practical level, I still want to ask you a few questions. Um, you said that it's 99%. You didn't say it's 100. Like in the beginning, you said it's 99. Do we still have a chance of some um, uh, states reversing their or changing their election results? Atlanta, for example, no, Atlanta, Arizona, for instance, uh, they had a, you know, big um, a press conference in Arizona saying that, you know, there is a chance it's going to be changed at the end. Do, we, do I, you see this? Look, there's always a chance. I don't think anything's going to change. I don't, I, I don't. Yeah, I hear. No. What, what are your comments about the uh, fraudulent, uh, you know, counting or about the legal battle? Or you think it will be all easily dismissed and we need to leave uh, beyond Trump era accepting Biden administration working with them. I will be very surprised if the legal cha challenges are not dismissed very quickly. Um, if you ask me, are there any irregularities? Is there any fraudulent voting? The answer should be by everyone. Of course, but is it widespread? No. Does it make a difference? No. When somebody is losing by thousands of votes, tens of thousands of votes, hundred thousands of votes, a few irregularities don't matter. It, it, when I say don't matter, they don't change the balance enough. Um, look, you know, all of the pundits, the political experts, were saying Trump had no chance. Just as they said four years ago, Trump had no chance. Trump came this close to winning. If there had been no COVID, he would have won huge. If the media were fair, Trump would have won huge. But certain things conspired against him. And the fact that he came so close, I mean, a whisker close. He may still win Pennsylvania, he may still win Georgia. He may still win North Carolina. But he lost Michigan. And he lost Arizona. And, he, and he's about to lose Nevada, as you and I are talking. Right, right. If he loses Nevada, Joe Biden has 270. Of course. And then the best Trump can do is 268. And it's over. By the way, I do not remember as close a race in my recent lifetime. Maybe never in my lifetime. And I give Donald Trump enormous credit. You know, Americans, Americans who love him, love him passionately. The rallies he gets, where they, it seems like People go on for miles and they stand in the cold for hours to get into buildings to see him. Right, right. It's you... enormous. And I make this point, by the way, Donald Trump lost. And not only that, he lost the popular vote, which means far less to me than it does to other people. He lost the, the popular vote because New York went overwhelmingly for Biden and California went overwhelmingly for Biden. If you take those two stout states out of the other 48 states, Trump wins. 
my point is Donald Trump has enormous support within the American people. And at the moment, Joe Biden has this much more. So, okay, he won. And he, he's now going to govern. Uh, many, many people feel he's not really well and that Kamala Harris will soon be president of the United States. Something else that I worry about. I don't really understand her stand on Israel or on issues of aggressive nature. He, she seems to me a very, very far left Democrat. But in America, there was almost an even divide between Democrats and Republicans, or better said, between people who wanted George, um, wanted Joe Biden to be reelected, or to even be elected, or Donald Trump to be reelected. It's almost right down the middle. And Biden has said he wants to heal America. I'm very anxious to see what he does to do that. Because what he has to do first, if he wants to heal America, is say to all those who supported Donald Trump, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I ever called you a bad name. I'm sorry anybody who voted for me ever called you a racist or a bigot. I'm sorry. I was wrong and my supporters were wrong. If Joe Biden has the courage to say that, he could begin the healing. But I will tell you now, Joe Biden will say, I want America to come together. But he won't say, I'm sorry. And if he doesn't say, I'm sorry, all the people he insulted and all the people the Democrats demonized, they will just hate. They'll hate what's happened to them. And I don't believe they're going to riot in the streets. And again, I'll say this again. I would love to know what you've experienced on the right that makes you say in the Russian community, in the Russian speaking community, it's as bad on the right as it is on the left. What I meant is that uh, in the social media, you have um, a lot of heated arguments with calling names. That's what I meant. It really goes both ways. But of course, um, as I said, I, I, wanna, I agree. I, no, no. I want to know among the people you know, among the people you walk with, among the people who walk the streets of Brighton, of of what, what are they saying about Biden supporters? Are they saying they're hideous people? No, no one calls anyone Hitler, for sure not. Or, are or you telling told, me that nobody in the- I'm talking about from the, from the uh, Trump supporters, no one will call names of this uh, people. Yeah, so, with them. by the way, I understand why, and look, you're on social media, so you may have pressures I don't have or I don't care about. But I refuse to make it seem like this is a bipartisan problem. It's so wonderful. I, 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 you, you inspire me once again. <laughs> you inspire me, yes, yes. You inspire me because um, you, you don't want to uh, make it equal. Um, it's not equal. equal. It's not equal. It is not equal. But you know, it's interesting. I, I spoke today to Sam Klieger, actually. I interviewed him today on our channel. And he said that um, based on the reports he got, statistics, maybe you heard that you saw it as well, um, approximately 40 to 60 or 45 to 55 people who voted for Biden actually voted not so much for Biden, but so much against Trump. So what? That, that's what, in other words, in terms of, um, he called it like people who say that, you know, Biden is a person, more people voted for him. Of course, people voted for him, but some people not so much because they were choosing him. But 
some people put it on social media. I would vote over a dead body or a, a stone, a rock, anybody but not Trump. There's no question that's true, but I've heard that every single election of my lifetime. That's nothing new. Nothing new. Most of the time people vote for the lesser of what they think are two evils. Because most of America, and I'm not talking about, <laughs> I'm not talking about liberals who are just crazy for Biden and for Harris. Most Americans, they feel our political class is corrupt and very, very disappointing. And one of the reasons why Trump won four years ago was because he was perceived as not being a politician, what he called the swamp. He wasn't from the swamp. And so America was just fed up with Republicans and fed up with Democrats. And that's something I understand. I understand anybody who has no high regard for the vast majority of politicians on both sides of the aisle. And Donald Trump came in as an outsider with a totally different mentality on how to get things done. And I'm going to say something very shocking. I don't know that I will be alive when it happens, but history will one day record that Donald Trump was one of the most effective presidents the United States has ever had. Doesn't mean he was the most beloved. Doesn't mean he was the sweetest. Doesn't mean he was the most genteel or socially proper. He was not. He does things and says things that make everybody cringe, even if you like the guy, even if you love the guy. You often say, why, Donald, why? But in terms of what he did for America, one day he will go down as one of the most effective presidents in American history. And I am sorry, more American Jews can't say that, even if they say, I want Joe Biden now. I want to applaud you once again, and especially to emphasize the importance of your Jewish channel. And I want people to know that they can subscribe to your channel, especially at the time of, so to speak, forgive me for this word, fake news, because we know, again, uh, this news delivered or the fake news media uh, made it sure or whatever it is. As you said, if not for this media attacks on Trump, which was also kind of interference with elections, possibly. Absolutely. Uh, so if not for that, uh, Trump, of course, will be winning huge. Absolutely. So, so I want to, first of all, put to you please tell people if they want to subscribe to your channel, what do they need to do? Okay, listen to me carefully, Arye. You used a word. I don't know what the word is in Russian. Yeah, say it in English and let's spell Just it. Just a minute. You used a word in English that is incorrect. RTN, to get RTN, you must subscribe. That means you must pay. Of course. JBS, my channel for American Jews and for all Jews who live in this country and any one of your audience who is fluent in English should love JBS. JBS is not a subscription channel. You don't have to pay one cent for it. If you have Optimum, we're on channel 138, 138 for free. If you have Verizon Fios, Fios 798 for free. If you have DirecTV, channel 388 for free. If you have Spectrum, channel 219, 219, free. And I will tell you this, this is breaking news. I'm telling only you. 
This is just between you and your audience. In a very short period of time, JBS will also be available on Comcast, which is the largest single television provider in America. So understand, we are not a subscriber channel. No one has to subscribe. All you have to do is take your remote control and hit 138. And if you have Optimum, there I am. I'm on every night at nine o'clock, midnight, three o'clock, and sometimes you will see Arye Katzen sitting with me, Arye Katzen <laughs> sitting with me, talking about his experiences as a Jewish refusenik, what seems like a million years ago. I want to thank you so much for this amazing interview. And I think the next time we should talk, we should still talk about something um, as building bridges because we do need as a community and as a country to come together. And I think we will do that when we'll clarify the, uh, you know, air, air will be cleared and uh, the result will be known. And we'll talk about how to rebuild communities and families, fathers and children still fighting, but God willing, it will all be good. I want to thank you so much. Shalom to you, Mark. All the Shalom best. to you too. Arye, anytime you call, I will be honored to be with you. You are a prince and a mensch. And you're one of the people who has helped me grow. And I have the highest regard for you. I have a highest regard for all the things you do for your community and for the Jewish people. So I wish you kol tuva Stay safe. And stay well, and we'll see each other soon. Thank you so much. Everything you taught me, everything I know about America and politics and values of America is because of you. I want this knowledge to be shared with everybody. All the Thank best. You. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.